Coach Johnson. It's David from Rivals. How you doing? Hey, David. I just uh, I'd been able to talk to a couple of other draftees and they told us their intentions on their social media platforms and stuff. I just wanted to know, do you have any update on Brock Selvich? Has he told you he's gone or still in flux? Yeah, I just think if you're drafted in the top 10 rounds, the full intent is to sign. I think players don't get picked that high unless they've agreed to terms. So it's my assumption he's signing. Thank you. Hey, Coach Johnson, this is uh, Glenn West with uh, LSU Country. Um, you know, just the, the opportunity to return, obviously, Gavin and, and Devin and Mikhail, um, just how much, you know, how, how important do you think that is in terms of just the having that veteran presence on the roster next year and getting those three guys back? I think it's huge. <laughs> Looking across the College World Series teams this year, one theme was they were all old and experienced. I think North Carolina State had – a ton of players drafted. Vanderbilt had a ton of players drafted. Uh, Mississippi State, obviously. So I think I can't understate it or overstate it uh, of how important that is. When you look at their product productivity on the field, you know, we want to be able to pitch and pitch at a high level. And you look at Devin and Mikhail, they pitched in high leverage situations, particularly at the end of the year, and pitched successfully in those situations. So you start there. And then with Gavin having, you know, 19 home runs, and, and I do think there's some area for improvement in his game that, that we can help him with, uh, has a chance to be as impactful a hitter as anybody in college baseball next year. On top of that, I spent a lot of time with these guys over the last two weeks. I mean, it honestly has been priority number one to have that come to fruition and getting to know them as people. I think there's some strong leadership qualities in all of them that will help us set a good foundation and moving forward as well. Yeah, Jay, Ron Higgins from Tiger Rag uh, Magazine. Uh, on your roster, where are you as far as numbers? I mean, where do you want to be and where are you right now? Well, the NCAA limit for the first game of the season in February is 40. And it's a little touch and feel right now. We're not too far above but maybe a little bit above that right now and uh we'll work through that you know throughout the rest of the summer in the fall you've had some transfers come in not just from arizona from other places how do you how do you assess people to transfer I mean, i'm sure a lot of people want to transfer here but how do you assess accepting them well it's evaluation it's evaluation of the entire program where we're at what we need to be successful what pieces uh can we add to it? And so it's been very intentional in terms of what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it. And like you said, Ron, everybody wants to come to LSU. Getting the right player is the most important thing. And the transfer portal, whether we all like it or not, is going to be a part of college athletics right now. And so in this case, it afforded us an opportunity to add some pieces to the team that needed to be improved. And so that's been our focus and will continue to be our focus until uh, we feel like we've put the best team that we possibly can together in a short amount of time. In terms of the things I'm looking for, that's probably a conversation for another day relative to each position, the skill set that's required, you know, to be an Omaha type player. Coach David, again from Rivals, two questions here. How much does it hurt just position wise to lose two catchers like Carter and Ian to the draft? And, and more important, having a player like Tyler McManus come in. And then just your thoughts on Coach Fitzgerald, you know, just coming in and what he's going to bring in terms of being your recruiting guy. Yeah, relative to the, the draft, I mean, it impacts college baseball in a significant way. I mean, I'm kind of one of those guys that they decided to go the direction they decided to go. So they're they're not a part of LSU. So I don't, I don't have a lot of thoughts or, or comments on it. My job is to manage who we're going to have and what we do going forward. And so we're under, under process in that, you know, you mentioned um, the position. It's obviously one of the most important positions on the field. I think when you look at Alex, he has tremendous defensive skills. I think he's one of the best catch and throw guys in college baseball. I'm excited to see what we can do to help him improve as an offensive player. And he's very excited to undergo the process of what that's going to take to do that. You know, in terms of Hayden Travinsky, I think he has a lot of talent. I mean, I remember when he committed to LSU, you know, he was one of the better 
or more high profile recruits in the country at that time. So we need to get him healthy and then we'll address the position by other means to make sure that we're covered. And so that's critically important in terms of coach Fitzgerald. I mean, I interviewed a lot of assistant coaches. I had at least 10 face-to-face coaching interviews before I landed on our staff. And so with coach Fitzgerald, how he kind of rose to the top for me is number one, he's an incredible human being. And it starts with the right people in your organization. He's a guy of high character, high work ethic, great motor. And then you look at the skill set. He was the best combination of recruiter and developer on the recruiting side of it. I think his evaluation skills set him apart and kind of, you know, playing off what Ron said, uh, recruiting here is more about evaluation than anything else. How do you hit that sweet spot just below the top of the draft and can, you know, be, have the players necessary to compete for championships and be an Omaha caliber team. I think he's excellent at that. He also, you know, has coached third base at an elite program. Um, you know, he's going to work with our infielders. He's going to be critical in the defensive positioning. And so I just thought he was very complete. And uh, that's, that's why I brought him to LSU. Hey, Coach, Matt Trent, WBRZ. I just kind of want to get your thoughts on the gift and the curse of this year's draft being 20 rounds, because maybe if it was normal with, you know, 40-some, maybe Gavin, Devin, McHale wouldn't be here. And, you know, is that, is that a luxury now? Just kind of how do you view the not-so-normal draft this year in your case? Better than 40 rounds, not as good as five rounds is how I view that. So, um, you know, it's just, it just adapt, improvise, overcome. I mean, co- college athletics right now, that's the continual model that you have to do. And whatever the circumstances are, they are what they are. You know, Jay Johnson is not going to change those. So we have to come up with a plan instead of complaining about it, do what we need to do. Now, relative to those three players, uh, they would not have signed um, after the 20th round. I mean, two of them made a declaration that after 10 rounds were over and their signing demands weren't met, that they were going to return to LSU. And I'm very thankful to them for that, for having such conviction in their ability and belief in what we're going to try to do here over the next year and how it can positively impact them going forward. And same with Gavin. I mean, he was very communicative to me. So Uh, I think college baseball is the best path for player development. I understand the one thing that changes people's mind is money and everybody's financial situation is different, but regardless of the money, you will not convince me that the low minor leagues or what I call complex baseball is a better environment to develop than Alex box stadium, than playing in the sec, than having an opportunity to go to Omaha than going to the Cape Cod League, than playing for Team USA, to having people that are really invested in your success. So that's my feelings on that. Uh, And just to follow up that, Coach, do you, in in so many words, and you can tell us whatever you can, is is that why Devin and Gavin didn't go because their financial demands were too high or that they just weren't slotted by the teams that were interested in their projected rounds? Well, I've watched both of them pitch. I I don't think the interest was a problem. I think it probably came down to they believe in themselves. I think uh, we had a a shared message of what we want the next 11, 12 months to look like. I think they think that we can help them. And there's some other things in play there, too. There's some emotional pull, which a lot of times pulls people to professional baseball. Their emotional pull was to our program and to this opportunity. And so that's very encouraging as a coach to have guys feel that way about what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be doing it and how it can positively impact them and LSU baseball. So I'm very grateful to them for all of those things. Hey, Jay, it's Wilson. Um, Are you able to, at this point, comment on Mark? And if so, what are y'all getting in him as a volunteer hitting coach? Yes, I am. I can comment on Mark pending a background check. So that's where we're at in that process. So very excited to have him. I think uh, our offensive success has been well documented at the two previous stops. Uh, We've known each other for 25 years, uh, have worked together 
for a long period of time. Uh, there is a very synergistic mindset and approach to what we are doing. There'll never be a confusing element to our players about the expectation of what a quality at bat is or what we're trying to do relative to a hitter's count, a two strike count, runners in scoring position, a mechanical blueprint, all of those things will be really, really well put in place. So it puts the player in the best position to be successful. A quick follow-up. If I could, did y'all first meet playing together at Shasta? Yes. Yes. Or later. At, in junior college. Hey, Coach. This is Glenn West again. I just have one more for you. Um, just, um, you know, this is probably a down-the-line question, a future question. But, you know, obviously the, the name, image, likeness stuff that's come out with college athletics. I'm curious as to how that can affect, obviously, baseball recruiting and, obviously, high school athletes as well. Yeah, you, know, you can make that pitch to them that, you know, you, you come here and you get a good college education, get to play in front of Alex Box and all that, but you also have a chance to make a little extra money as well. I mean, just I'm curious as to how maybe that could affect the future of, of the draft and of recruiting and, you know, maybe luring some bigger talented guys down the line. Well, first off, I'm 100 percent. So that's that's the first element of it. Second, I want them to be able to use their platform to create value for themselves. Thirdly, I think very specific to LSU, the interest in our program, how passionate people are in the state about LSU baseball. I think they garner a significant amount of attention as is. And I think that attention will be a good platform for the players to take advantage of those new rules. And we are working on constructing ways to help them do that. And it's a completely different model than what we've dealt with to this point in time. So I am very thankful that LSU on the forefront of this thing seems to be on the cutting edge and seems to be putting some things in place for all the athletes to have to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, hey coach, Doug Mouton at WWL TV in New Orleans. You said a few minutes ago that with Gavin, you can help him, you see things. Did you identify things in either his approach or his mechanics at the plate that you think you can help work on? And when you work with hitters, do you have principles, just general, it certainly sounds like it, listening to you, some general principles that you think help any hitter, or were there some specific things in his mechanics that you saw that you think you can help? Yeah, a little bit of both. And I think they're intertwined. I think he has a very good swing. I think he's strong. I think uh, he's very connected and he utilizes the strength that he has incredibly well. So I think for him, and this falls in line with our development process, there's uh, some foundational things relative to timing, relative to vision, using his eyes, relative to commanding the strike zone, relative to approach in hitters counts or two strike counts or runners in scoring position that he's going to fully be able to take advantage of the talent that he has. I'm sorry, one quick follow-up. Do, do you consider that your best quality or, or one of your best qualities is just your ability to help guys at the plate with their approach? Is, is that one of the things that you sort of put as an asterisk is this is what I do well? You know, I think if you ask me one strength, it'd be helping players with their mindset. I mean, we're going to work on mindset every day in our, our program. And that certainly is a key key part of being a great hitter and learning how to play the game one pitch at a time or one at, a, at bat at a time and being in the right frame of mind to take tools like a, a really good player like Gavin has and maximize those. And so the, the answer is probably yes, but I, I would say it's in general, you know, throughout the team, but, but definitely from an offensive perspective. All right, hold on just a second. All right, y'all can get started with questions for Devin. Hey, uh, Devin, it's Glenn uh, with LSU Country. Um, you know, just, I guess, talk about first the, the decision to come back. And I guess uh, you don't have to go into huge details, but just kind of what you were looking for in the draft and why it was ultimately better for you to come back to school for another year. Yeah. Um... I decided to come back because of things that, you know, me and Coach Jay discussed and also the fact that I want to help lead this team 
to Omaha, and I think that this year we'll have a good chance for that. Uh, I knew that I knew that if I was going to go in the draft, I, I was looking to go in the top five rounds. Um, but at the same time, I think I have things I need to do at LSU still to get me in that situation. So that's why I ultimately needed to come back so I can, um, you know, help help LSU and help myself in the future. Devin, David from Rivals, was one of those chances or one of those things to improve upon the chance to possibly bust through into this starting rotation? And is that something you want to try to fight for this fall? For sure, no doubt. Um, I've always wanted to be a starter, but at the same time, like I loved closing games. Uh, I loved being able to, you know, come in and finish the game and, you know, everybody excited at the end of the game. Like I love that, but uh, I know that I have – the ability to be a starter and uh, I've been a starter before and that's what I that's what I really want to do because I think I'm going to be able to um, you know showcase my skills a little bit better. Oh sorry my hey Devin it's Wilson. Um, What's up? With the was there any element – you and Mikhail are, are pretty close. I think y'all have been roommates for the past couple of years, I'm not mistaken. Was there any element of y'all kind of wanting to come back together, um, especially considering what Mikhail has gone through the last couple of months? Oh, for sure, Wilson. Um, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, me and Mikhail definitely have been – we've been roommates over the uh, course of this past year uh, on the road and stuff like that. And then we were roommates back in freshman year uh, at LSU, like on campus. But – we, we were we were together on every road trip this year uh, and spent a lot of time talking about, you know, different possibilities and stuff like that. But whenever the season ended um, and that happened to his dad, we you know, I definitely reached out to him and I, and I knew that it was going to take a minute for, for me to hear back from him. Uh, but whenever we finally uh, got together and got to talk about it, um, I told him I was like, dude, uh, you, you definitely you definitely have to come back. Everybody, everybody's going to be there for you. Um, I'm going to be there for you. Um, and you, you got to, you got to come back. And, and I think that our, our relationship has, has gotten better over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we've gotten a little closer and, and I'm excited to, to see and what I can do, um, you know, and we can be the leaders of this team. Hey, Gavin, uh, Matt, Trent, WBRZ. I just kind of – did you get any calls during rounds one through five from anyone that was seriously considering taking you in that range you you just mentioned? And what I'm getting at is, like, how really close were you to signing and not coming back to LSU? I, mean, I don't know if you can hear us. Your feed's frozen. I think that I still have some stuff that I want. I want to. Uh, I think I've been closer in the past than I than I was this past season. Um, but like, it's a lot left that I need to get done. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, Devin, can you start that over? You kind of kind of blacked out on us there to the in the beginning. Just start that over for me, bud. All right. I was saying that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't receive very many calls and I think that 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 that's a uh, that's because of the way I was a little inconsistent this season and that's that's something that I I know that I need to improve on and that's that's one of the reasons why I want to go back to LSU I I want to help the team and I also want to help myself put myself in a better situation to be that much closer to uh getting what I think I that I think I can get Hey, Devin, uh, I guess just one more for me. Um, when you look at this roster top to bottom, I mean, from the pitching arms, you guys are returning, and obviously some of the new additions that Coach Johnson has brought in and the recruiting class as well. Um, just, I mean, what, what's the ceiling on this team? I mean, just if on, on paper, what I mean, just how far do you think you guys can go next year? I think it's going to be the most special group I've been a part of, and I've been, I've been a part of some good ones, but um, – 
with this new staff and the new things that we're we're gonna we're gonna try to uh, tackle. Like it's gonna be something that all of us is not experienced. I don't think, and um, I think everyone's just gonna be that much more excited um, for the fall. And every day we get to the field, everybody's gonna gonna be there and and want to want to put in the work a lot more than they already did. And I think that's gonna that's gonna do that's gonna do a lot of good things and, and show show what we really can do during the season. Hey Devin, it's uh, Michael Cobble, and, and you kind of probably just answered this, but I just talked with Coach Johnson, and, and the thing that I got is that there's a lot of of um, work, like you said, that they are willing to do with the players individually, kind of pouring into the players to get them better. How much have you talked to Coach Kelly about that, and? How eager are you to kind of have that real, that real focus on you and what it takes to, to take Devin from where he is to where he wants to be? Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, we have, me and Coach Kelly has talked a little, a little bit. Yeah, you're breaking up again, buddy. But I talked to him, and just by talking to him one day, I, I realized that, hey, that's what's best for us. And I think that the individualized is going to help us like the program that we do. I think you're back. Are you back now? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, we didn't get any of that. I'm about That's tired of these Zoom calls, man. Y'all just need to, to wait till we get back on campus and come <laughs> come talk to me in person. We just need to go to Texas and hang out with you, right? Yeah, like this is getting a bit too Talk to, me about Kale, talk to me about Kale Lansfield. Do you know him? You know what's going on there, and what kind of relationship have y'all been able to put together? Um, I haven't really got to talk to him too much. I think I I, I have met him one time, um, but no, I haven't I haven't got to develop a, a good relationship with him yet. But I, I am looking forward to it. Devin, I just have a quick one. Where are you exactly right now? I'm uh I'm driving to go see some family in Texas, uh, but I, I'm like I'm at home in Texas right now. But I'm driving a little bit away from my house to go visit some some family members. Zooms like, like All right. said, Zoom sucks. <laughs> well, can get started with questions for Gavin. Gavin, David from Rivals, twofold on the question, why come back? And just is one of the biggest reasons to where it could be, you know, Dugas, Morgan, Cruz, Barry. Just talk about what the potential the 2022 lineup has. To be honest, it's absurd, uh, the amount of talent we're going to have on this team. And uh, to answer that question, I'd say why not? You know, uh, we're going to have a great opportunity to do a lot of great things. Um with this program and with this team. And, and I, I really wanted to be a part of it. And um, I think at the end of the day, it, it's the ultimately the best decision for me. Hey, Gavin, it's Glenn West here. Um, you know, Coach Johnson told us over the last couple of weeks, he's had a great chance to get to know you a little bit better, to get to know Mikhail and Devin. Um, I guess just kind of what has been the conversations with him um, about what he can offer you and what this, you know, new staff can offer you mm -hmm. in terms of you know, kind of uh, improving and can finding that consistency in the draft stock for next year and how, how you can improve on your game for next season. Right. Uh, I do not day, I, I'm, I'm more worried than anything about uh, is, is just learning from him. Um, I, I know that he, he's bringing a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge with him, and I just want to soak everything that he has up. Um, I, I understand that, that he, he's a guru when it comes to hitting. And uh, to be honest, I love everything about that. And, and I, I was able to kind of get to know him a lot over the last couple of weeks. He's gotten to know me a lot. Um, and he seems like a great person. I, I'm really excited to play for him. I'm really excited to just to, just to go to battle for him. Gavin, just, I guess, looking back on the draft for yourself, what sort of 
what were you looking for if the draft had, you know, in order for the draft to, to go in that direction? Um, and ultimately, why, why did you kind of decide to wait until after it all ended instead of maybe like Devin or Mikhail did on Monday night? Uh, at the end of the day, we were we were kind of just feeling out everything, uh, seeing seeing what the best offers were, uh, just going through the options, um, and just kind of just trying to feel out what was best for me. Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, I, I felt that that was the best thing for me is is to come back to LSU and enjoy another year of uh, playing for the Tigers. How much do you like his individual approach, uh, Coach Johnson? He took you know we talked and. He talks a lot about film and getting in there with you guys and, you know, really, you know, developing you specifically and the things that you're going to need to do because that has to excite you, I'm assuming. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all for it. You know, I, I do love film. I, I love I love looking into the swing a little bit deeper than usual. Um, I just from from talking with Coach Jay, he, he brings a, a un, absurd amount of confidence with him and how he carries himself. Um, and I think. I think that's going to carry over to the team, to, to each individual player and every, every guy on the roster, to be honest. I think, I think we're, going to, we're going to be pretty damn good with, with him, him coaching us and, and him kind of moving us forward in that direction. I, I'm really looking forward to the, to the first day of practice when we get out there and just having him talk to the team. And, and I'm, I'm really fired up, to be honest with you. I can't wait to get on campus and uh, get to work. Yeah, hey, Gavin, just kind of following up on that a little bit. I mean, what's the next couple months look like for you in terms of what you're going to be working on and, and, and I guess, developing um, before you guys obviously get back for, for fall practice? What are some of the areas? Right. Uh, I am currently – I actually took the whole summer. Uh, I decided not to play summer ball just to kind of prepare my body uh, and put it in the way that I, I really wanted it to be. Um, and, and I'm just kind of just taking care of my, my individual pieces that I, I felt that I needed to work on. Um, and I, I will have a conversation with Coach Jay later in the week or in the beginning of next week just to kind of go over what, what he's been thinking about, what he's been looking into, because uh, I, I just value his opinion so much right now. And I, I think that he, he, he's able to put me on the right track to be where I want to be and where he wants me to be for this program. And I'm just going to take, take the rest of the summer and until the season starts, until practice starts, and just, just get my body right and my mind right and get ready to go. Did they give you a weight plan? Yeah. Yes, sir. We we get one every every year whenever the season ends from our from our trainer. So, do they give you a revised one? N no. Have you had a, uh, I'm sorry. Um, have you had a chance to uh, interact with Jacob Berry at all via text or conversations or anything? Obviously, he's an, a huge addition to this roster. I'm curious as to maybe any conversations you've had with him. I have I actually reached out to him about a, a week and a half ago just to kind of introduce myself and uh, get to know a couple of things about him. You know, just to let him know that we appreciate him coming uh, for sure. And uh, we're really looking forward to having him. How much do you guys as, as players talk about the collective uh, excitement and, and buy-in? Like, I mean, are you all texting? Is there a group text where you guys really talk about like, oh, okay, Coach Jay told me this, you know, dude, I'm fired up about this. Let's get together and talk. Or, I mean, is it, <clears throat> are you kind of everybody chilling on their own right now? Or, or is there like a real sense of, Matt, we have we have a lot of potential and it's about to get unlocked. I think it's more of an understood thing. We we really don't as a team kind of just go over that together and like our group me, I guess you could say. We we kind of all keep to ourselves over the summer. I'm sure a couple of guys keep in touch here and there. Like I, I have I keep in touch with my roommates with Beloso and, and Bianco and, and stores who plays football. Um, but most of the time it's uh it's just guys kind of like staying in touch with each other little by little over the summer and it's it's an understood excitement, I guess you could say. Everybody knows, and everybody's looking forward to getting back. And and I think that's that's what's so exciting about it. So, Gavin, you, you're doing this Zoom from your house at Homa. Is that? I am. Yes, be? sir. I'm in Homa for the week. Yes. Gotcha. You said it's for the week. Do you come back to Baton Rouge, hit and stuff, or? Well, usually uh, what I had been doing in the beginning of the summer, I was uh, Monday through Friday, I was in Baton Rouge working out and training uh, attraction uh, and hitting at LSU. Um, but then I, I come home on the weekends and I came home last weekend because of the draft. And I, I've been home since then just to kind of be with my family for everything. Uh, but I plan on moving back on Monday and starting the whole process and continuing that. You may have answered this and I missed it, but like what, what were your expectations for the draft? I mean, were you wide open or did you? really have like a, a narrow number? Or... 
Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the draft is crazy. Um, it, it's it's all over the place when it comes to expectations. Uh, I did have my personal expectations uh, just from talking to scouts and and my uh, my my people about it. Um, but at the end of the day, it really didn't work out that way, and that, and that's just part of the part of the happenings of the draft. Um, but I, I fully believe that that's part of God's plan that that I'm here and I, I'm in this situation talking to you guys right now about coming back. And uh, I, I don't have. I have as much confidence as ever. Um, I feel like I told Coach Jay in a text the other day, I feel like I, I just committed to LSU as a freshman again, and I couldn't be more happy. Gavin, how, you know, you talked to Coach Johnson, you talked to Devin, and, and you can see the energy and the smile on your face. How much of this is just a fresh start for everybody, and it's kind of just like a do-over? You don't get a lot of second chances in life. How much have y'all taken that approach on in terms of just the program? I think it's a... Uh... I think it's the idea of, of something new coming our way, you know, um, not in a bad way at all. Uh, nothing negative towards anything that's happened in the past. I think, I think it's just a, it's a fresh start. Um, it's something exciting to look forward to something new that a lot of people don't know of. And I think not only are the fans looking forward to it, I think the players are as well. Um, and I, I think that's, what's kind of getting everybody pretty excited to get home for summer ball as soon as possible and get back into their dorms, their apartments and their houses and, and getting ready to go. When did you uh, send Jay that text message? I sent him that text message the, I think the night after I decided that I was coming back after the draft. Uh, I had called him and and let him know, and then uh, I was kind of sitting there and just going over everything, and I just I just felt a, a overcoming of emotion just of how how excited I am because truly this place really does mean a lot to me, and I, I can't be more thankful for LSU. This is. This has always been a dream of mine, just to just even be be on the team, to be honest. And uh, the fact that I'm in this position right now, I, I, I truly thank God and my family for it. So, there she is. Get. You can get started. Uh... Questions are open from the camera. Mikhail, can you get somewhere a little bit brighter? Um, a window or something? Let me see. I'll turn on this light. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, yeah there you go. <laughs> Wait, I think it's the, uh, that fan. Oh. I don't know if you can turn your camera sideways. Your phone sideways. Or some, the, yeah, some, that's good. Right there. Kind of... So, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? Cobble, we want to wait till he switches the camera? No, you're good. Go ahead. Mikhail, right, cool. can you turn your camera sideways? I don't know if it'll work. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yep. sir. Hey, hey Mikhail. This hey, is uh, Glenn West here with LSU Country. Um, first off, just condolences to you and your family, um, you know, just, just everybody's thinking about you and, and you know, uh, sorry about your loss. Um, I guess for you, just, I guess, talk about, you know, what you were looking for from the draft and, and um, the, the obvious decision to come back and, and, and play one more year. Hello. We got you. You're good. Yeah, it was kind of, it, his, he kind of froze. Um, well, Coming back, uh, my mindset completely changed after uh, what recently happened with my father, his passing. And um, before before I, I was actually coming coming back to Central to talk about what my my plans were uh, going into the future after after the season ended, and I really wanted to go and, and see what 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 my arm could take me. Uh, in the draft, whether it's uh, whether it was the tenth round, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but uh, I wasn't offered that type of money, and and I wasn't backing down from from where I uh, where I stood. So I I figured the best idea was to come back, and especially with everything that's going on with the NIL, I figured the best but my best choice was to come back and uh, try to prove myself. As as a legend leaving leaving LSU. Did y'all get all of it? Okay. Yeah. 
I thought we were waiting on David, but um, <laughs> too. Mikhail also can condolences to you. I mean, you talked just now about how that completely changed your mindset. Was so before you're losing your father, you were intent on on heading to maybe start your pro career. And I mean, just what was what were those few days like? For you, if it's something that you can talk about now, and I'm sure it's really difficult, but how much has, I don't know, your whole life outlook changed over the last month or so? Um, just just knowing that I won't be able to um, continue my path with my dad, it, it, it was truly heartbreaking. And coming to that realization, I mean, a lot of people don't feel this, and some people do, and they can relate. But those th that first week after it happened, it, you're still in shock. Like it, it, it doesn't hit you till a, a week or two later. It would, like you know that that loved one isn't going to be there for you, and you won't be able to talk to them again or or communicate in any kind of way. So I was really just in shock. And once uh, we started getting funeral preparations and, and things done, it, it really hit me. I'm like, man, I'm really not going to be able to talk to my dad anymore. And and how I just keep remembering how great of a man he was and and how influential he was for me my whole life. I was just blessed. I just feel blessed that I was able to spend 22 years with him and grow up in, in his household, you know. But uh, as far as my mindset, uh, it definitely changed a lot. Um, he really wanted me to stay at LSU another year, graduate, and then move on and try to try to get my master's. So that's what I plan on doing. And I've set my goals very high, even though I, I didn't go to the, go to the draft. I, I've set my goals really high, and I plan to come back and fulfill that. It's a great story, man. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Let's talk some baseball, I guess, if you don't mind. And just the coaching staff and Coach Kelly, um, I'm, I'm sure you talked to him. And, you know, the vibe that I get is that they really want to pour themselves into the players, right, and make them all better, specifically and individually. And I don't know what, you know, and this isn't about what's happened in the past as much as it is the potential for moving forward. Do you really feel that excitement and energy of, like, man, I'm going to get this focused energy and attention? Yes, sir. I definitely do. From the first time I talked to to both uh, both coaches, is it's been we are going to develop you and do anything and everything possible to making you the best ball player we can. And and I solely believe that they seem like they have they. I mean, they definitely know what they're doing. They've been to Omaha the past the past two years, and um, they've. They've uh, built up a really good program over at Arizona, and I feel like it's going to translate well over to LSU, especially with our fan base and, and our support. Hey, Mikhail. Um, sorry, I got cut off in that first question, but um, just, you know, the opportunity to come back and be a leader of this team. I know last year you were a senior, but, you know, you were kind of in that, you know, state of kind of unknown with the pitching staff. Now you get to come back and be kind of the face of the pitching staff along with Devin. Um, just, just how important was that for you in, in making this decision and, you know, being able to be a leader for this team next year? Um, being here for this, I've, I've always felt like I had, I had my, uh, my hand in the pot when it comes to leadership. Uh, I feel like anybody can be a leader. There's definitely, there's always freshmen that come in that, that are true ballers and they, they uh, lead by example on the field and that, that can be looked at as, as leadership. <clears throat> But also, I feel like, well, a lot, not a lot of people know this, but I actually am more vocal than than uh, that I portray on the mound. Uh, I get I get excited at practice, and I, I uh, try to lead by example and and uh, get the boys rallied up before games and things like that. So I feel like that's gonna translate well over to, to next year too. I had I had a few times uh, last year where I, sh I showed leadership, and and I know what it's about. I'm I'm a local. Uh, I'm, I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, and I feel like I'll translate really well over to to getting these freshmen and and new incoming new incoming players on board.
Okay. When you also thought you, you know, you said that you had a number that teams didn't hit. Do you feel like coming back for another year, if you're able to do what you did at the end of this season for an entire year, could really boost your stock? Was that also just a big piece of this? Oh, that 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. I I feel like uh, if I would have did what I, if I do what I did last year. Uh, at the end of the year, then I definitely uh, raise my stock. Um, it's just all about. I mean, pitching pitching is a very mental game. You know, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have your best days, but uh, if you go out there with with your mind locked, completely locked in, solely into to doing whatever it takes to get uh, how many other outs and give your chance to team uh, your team a chance to win, then you'll be very successful and. That's what I'm. I'm going into next year. Uh, thinking, just give my my team a chance to win. Do as long as as hard as I can. On that, Devin said that, uh, <clears throat> especially over the last few weeks, y'all had started kind of talking a lot. Um, was did, was there any element of you, sort of the two of you as as seniors, kind of making this decision together, or was it very separate and then it just kind of worked out that now you're both coming back? Uh. No, nah, Devin, Devin was right. We uh, <laughs> we we've been talking a lot over the past few weeks, especially, you know, given my situation with my family. Devin's Devin, me and Devin's family have always been very close, and they've been a uh, a family a uh, a home away from home. You know, they've always taken care of me, just like uh uh the rest of my team. That everybody is. That's why LSU is so special because. It's literally like a family. It's not, I don't consider my uh, other teammates and their families just friends or associates. They're, they're pretty much family and everybody's here for me. Uh, that decision, it was pretty much me and him were communicating really closely about it. And you know, like, th there's a lot of opportunity for us to come back and, and uh, really make a name for ourselves and, and, uh, and increase our draft stock. And we're just like, let me go sit back and think think on it. We have we have time uh, to think about it, and we did. And we figured the best decision was for us to both both come back and be be the leaders uh, and take the reins for LSU. Mikhail, what I'm I'm sorry about the passing of your father, but what does it mean to you that he was able to see this season that you had this year? It means so much to me. Um, my dad tells me tells me that he's he's proud of me after every game, but it really hit hit my heart uh, after my last out in, in Tennessee. He uh, he had a he texted a, a short paragraph of telling me how proud he was of me, especially over the past four years, and I'm still not done yet. He's he still believed that I wasn't done yet, so. I still have a lot, a lot to prove whenever I come back. Does it, um, does it, does it help you cope a little bit? You know, knowing that this is what he wanted, you feel like you're kind of carrying his energy with you. Yeah, I, I feel like I carry him with me everywhere I go. I, I am my father's son, and and uh, I, I have a lot of characteristics that's that's just like him, and. It it really hit home whenever uh, I was with all of my family that I haven't seen in a while. You know, sometimes you don't want to. I have a huge family on both sides, so I don't see everybody all the time, especially being busy with baseball. And they they come up to me and they're like, "You you you're just like your dad. You're just like your dad. And you don't notice that in, until someone either passes away or." or uh, you haven't seen family in a long time and just feel like bringing everybody to get back together during that time. It was, uh, it was, it was something special. Yeah. Mikhail, Ron Higgins, Tiger Ray. What, what was it like to get your groove back this year? I mean, you, you've chased it for since your freshman year to get, get that groove back that you had. What was it like to finally discover it and, and, you know, find the firm that you wanted to get back there and stay there? Um, it was, it was a struggle trying to get, get back to my groove, you know, uh, 
like I said, baseball is a very mental sport, but it's also it's also uh, uh, a game of staying healthy. You never want to be on a bench ever. <laughs> Anytime you can get play time, you you want to take that take that and and try to make the best out of it. So uh, after my freshman year, whenever I started getting tattered with with uh, soreness and like minor energies, I mean like uh, uh, injuries every once in a while. Uh, I felt that like that really affected me. And you know, I talked about it a little bit earlier in the year, but just like minor uh, soreness in my shoulder and, and form tightness in my form that affects you. That affects how you think whenever you're on the mound and uh, not to, not to say it's an excuse, but it, it really is something like, and be uh, cognizant of. So I feel like that, played its part in me finding my groove and being able to go out there and let it rip so I can be the strike throwing machine everybody knows. Thanks, buddy. All right, all right. is that all for Mikhail? All right. That's it. Thanks. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Thanks,